Hi, I'm Nikki, the Obsessive Bookseller. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing Project YA. I just finished uh, Project Sci-Fi and so it's Project YA's time and I'm just filming my TBR for May and I want to know what book to try to work into the rotation. Now, last time I did this, I picked a title and then read the entire series. That took me a couple of months to do and it wasn't really time effective and then I ended up losing footage and having random footage here and there because it was like a kind of an ongoing blog. I don't want to do that again. So I think to keep things simple, I'm going to pick a number from a jar and read just that first book. And then when I finish, I'm going to put the number back in the jar and put the second book on the shelf in its place. So if it comes up in rotation again, then I'll continue the series. That's the current plan. I change my mind all the time with this, but I think one book per vlog is probably sufficient. Okay, so need to know what I'm reading. Okay, we are going with Number four, so let's go look at the shelf. I have no idea what that is. Okay, here's the lineup of titles in no particular order. This is like first books or continuation in series on my YA shelves that are kind of higher priority than the rest. I'll link the original video where I went through more of these in detail. But number four should be Silo by DJ McHale. This is, I believe, a post-apocalyptic duology by the same author who wrote the Pendragon series, which if you haven't checked out Pendragon, it's one of my favorite middle grade series. The world building in here is so cool and it really builds somewhere meaningful and it's just, yeah, it's excellent from start to finish. Can't recommend it enough. But since I had so much success with that one, I decided to read more by this author because I really like him. I met him at a signing and got this one signed at one point, which is pretty cool. So, okay. Good to know. I will check in with this one as soon as I have an update. Let's talk about Silo for a minute. I thought I knew what this book was about, but it's not turning out anything like I kind of had the impression it would. What it's supposedly about is this high schooler on an island off the East Coast. Like, people just start dropping dead for unexplainable reasons. That sounded really interesting to me. But so far, it's not taking the direction I thought it would, and I don't know, the people around him are a little more mysterious than I thought they would be. I kind of figured it would be like an outside source causing the trouble, which it still very well may be. I don't know anything about it, and only one inciting moment in the very first chapter has happened so far. But, you know, I'm, I'm about eight chapters in, and it's just kind of meandering. So I'm, I'm on the fence. I do love this author, and I'm willing to give him a shot. Um, it is interesting. I'm used to reading Young Adult, where the females are the main characters, and some of them are quite boy crazy. In this one, it's a male main character, and he is girl crazy, which, you know, it's kind of fun to have that, like, little bit of opposite going on there. There's also a heavy emphasis on football, which, good thing I like sports, because I'm enjoying that bit quite a bit. But yeah, these are things that we are talking about that I did not think would be in play. I figured we'd kind of hit the ground running with some serious stuff, kind of like in Dan Wells's Partials series, if you've read that one. I was hoping for kind of similar vibes. So anyway, uh, things aren't moving as fast as I think they should quite yet, but I'm still engaged enough to keep reading for a bit longer. It's one of those things where the mystery, if we're going to drag it out it better have a good payoff. And I was wrong. I only own two books, so I thought it was a duology, but it is actually a three-book series, a trilogy, and I think only two were out when I met the author and got them signed. So, I mean, there's more at stake here for liking it or not, because if I don't like it, I've got these signed copies that I have to figure out what to do with. So that's a little bit of my motivation to keep going as well. So we'll see how it goes. I'm borderline on this book. I'm about 25% of the way through and it's taken me a couple of weeks to get this far. So I'm not super engaged. But the problem is, is I kind of know that there's something weird going on on this island due to the introduction and what the book is about. But we really haven't gotten into it yet. We are just now starting to get into where the plot thickens. And I just thought the buildup was a little bit too long considering I already knew what was going to happen. That's why I don't read the backs of books. This one, I didn't even really read the back of the book. There was just an author introduction at the beginning that kind of told me what was going to come. But yeah, so right now, it it comes down to whether or not I care enough about finding out the mystery of what's going on on this island. 
and things are getting a little more interesting and I'm finding myself a little bit more engaged, but I'm just not sure. So I, I have a feeling this is going to be one of those series where, kind of like Maze Runner, hopefully not that bad, but where you kind of get a little bit of information and then you get a couple more questions and then you get a little more information and then a couple more questions. So yeah, we'll see if I have the patience for that. So far, not amazing, but not bad. I really like the guy's writing style and yeah, a bit intriguing. It's official. I'm DNFing Silo. I am about 60% of the way through this book and the pacing in this one is atrociously slow. Like, you know something weird's going on on this island. It takes way too long to get to where there's, like, action happening and things moving. But the thing is, is, like, I made it that far, right? Like, I got to the part where the action was going, so it should have been smooth sailing from there. My biggest problem was once the action started happening, I found I really didn't like the way the characters responded. And first of all, I really don't like the characters. I'm not feeling connected to them. I really, like, they don't feel like real people to me. But at the same time, the things that they're doing in response to what's going on around them seem incredibly unrealistic to me. And so, and not to mention stupid. They're making a lot of stupid decisions that just, they don't make any sense. But then again, the smart thing to do would be to not go do anything and then you don't have a book. So I get kind of why he's making them do certain things. But we got to a point now where I'm like, yeah, that is the last thing a reasonable human being would do. And so I'm... I just, I'm not invested anymore. I find I don't care about what's really going on because it's a trilogy. I feel like it's just going to be three books of unanswered questions and then boom, just however the author decides to end it. I don't know. I may even like do some research and figure out what was actually going on, but I don't see, I don't even care enough to do that. So this is a bummer because this is a signed personalized copy. I think my second one is also signed and personalized. I don't own the third one. But I think I'm going to uh, let them go. I have my Pendragon collection, beloved hardcover set, all signed by the author that I love. And so I don't really need to hang on to a series that I didn't necessarily like. That's the thing. I'm learning and I'm growing because I used to think that if I liked one thing from an author, it was kind of disloyal to not like and read everything from that author. And so I would read stuff and I'd force myself through it and then end up not really liking it. But I felt like I kind of had to not the case. So I'm letting this one go. This marks the end of this particular episode of Project YA and hopefully my next read will be a bit better because I mean I gotta say like I, I, I know there's some good ones in there. I just have to find them. And this one was okay but just yeah kind of a struggle for me. So other books you might like if you liked Silo or if you were interested in Silo, but kind of after my feedback, don't really want to read it, but want something in that same vein, Maze Runner is the one that immediately came to mind when I started this one, only that one had much, much better pacing. Now, granted, it's one of those stories where for every one question it answers, it gives you two more to ponder, and it just keeps doing that the whole series. It drove me crazy to the point where I DNF the series, but I am one of the few who didn't love it quite as much. But I, I thought everything was a lot tighter. I thought the world building was better. And it kind of had that same like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Let's try to figure it out together kind of thing. And I like the characters a lot better than that one. Now, kind of an apocalyptic thing happening. My all-time favorite, Partials by Dan Wells. I thought this, this book in particular, the trilogy was okay, but this first book is one of my favorite things I've ever read. So if you want kind of the feel of Silo, but with better characters, more science, everything kind of in your face right at the beginning, higher stakes, like I really like this one. And this story did remind me a bit of Divergent by Veronica Roth from the sense of there's something going on that's bigger than us, but you know, maybe we can affect things even though we're just like a tiny little fraction of what's going on. We do matter. And that's kind of the similar vibes that I got from both of them, only this one had a lot cooler world building and I, don't, I wouldn't say magic system, but you know what I mean. And that's that for now. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode and I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.